First, we mount the camera on the gimbal. Next, add some counterweights. Swivel arm for monitor one. Holster for monitor two. Monitor two being my iPhone. Battery for monitor one. And mini HDMI to HDMI cable to connect it all together. Boom, complete camera stabilization with a 5.7 inch full HD monitor and touch screen capability. Is this too much? This is my new rig. Look how legit this looks. If I walk into a gig carrying this thing around, everyone's gonna be like, damn, this guy definitely knows what he's doing. As awesome as this thing looks, it was a bitch to put together. And I don't mean assembling or mounting all the parts. I'm talking about working around the problems that this kind of setup initially had. Here's what I mean. Let's take this apart first. Problem one, in order for this camera and this lens to be balanced on this gimbal, the HDMI port would have to be way too close to this motor. And with the motor blocking the port, I couldn't plug in, so I had to move the camera backwards. But that made the camera back heavy. To fix this, I had some leftover weight plates from my glide cam that I don't use, and I just stuck a screw through, and then I loaded up in front as a counterweight. Now this is too front heavy, but this doesn't include the weight of the HDMI cable. Which brings me to problem number two. This is the cable that the monitor came with. Now when plugged in, this HDMI cable shoots out of the camera this way over this arm and this motor, which is problematic because when I would go tilt the gimbal, that cable would get in the way of that arm and this motor couldn't do its job at keeping the horizon level. So I needed something that feeds through down here. Let's see what Amazon has. Right angle coiled mini HDMI to HDMI male supports 1080p. This HDMI cable shoots down at a 90 degree angle, so I could insert down here, plug in, and now this arm won't get in the way when I tilt. Next, we mount the swivel arm with the external monitor to the added grip that I got, and we add it in via cold shoe, which brings me to problem number three. Now, if I were to mount the monitor all the way in, it becomes perfectly in line with this motor, the pan motor which means that I can't plug into the HDMI port, which is down here, right next to the pan motor. So to fix that, I'm going to push this forward just a little bit. The cold shoe is only halfway in, but if I tighten it enough, this thing's not gonna go anywhere. Now I could tilt it slightly, and now we could plug in. All right, we're all hooked up and ready to go, right? You would think, problem number four, when this camera is connected to an external monitor, it loses its touchscreen LCD, which sucks because I use that touchscreen for everything. White balance, exposure, frame rates, and the super convenient tap to autofocus. Now I can do all that manually. I push the menu button and then I use these buttons to scroll through the folders and find whatever page I wanna be on, but that could be super time consuming. And depending on the shoot, I may need to change white balance or find focus within one or two moves. Phone holster. My phone connects to the camera via Wi-Fi. Once connected, I could open the Canon app and put it in live preview mode and I see what the camera sees. And in live preview mode, I get all the functions that I need at my fingertips. Literally, because my phone is touchscreen. Now I could adjust my exposure, white balance, frame rate, and tap to autofocus. So the question becomes why? Why go through all this trouble to build a bigger, heavier rig? I could get by just fine with the on-camera LCD and not have all these other accessories. The answer is threefold. Reason number one, size matters. Now I'm talking about the size of the screen. The on-camera three-inch display makes it difficult for me to make sure I'm in focus or if I'm exposed right. There were a few times when I thought I was in focus and in post, it turns out that I wasn't. I missed. And when it comes to exposure, it's really hard to see details on such a small screen. With a 5.7 inch full HD display, I could see everything clearly. There is no question of what's in focus, and I could see the details a lot better just because it's scaled a lot bigger. Reason number two, obviously the stabilization of the Zion Crane version two. 
With the glide cam, it's really hard for me to get smooth shots with a tighter focal length. Third reason is marketing. Walking around with something like this makes me look like I have some badass gear. If I film an event, it is going to be obvious to everyone that I am the videographer and not some other Joe Schmo with a DSLR. So that's my new rig. That's all I have for you today. This is Kevin Mendoza. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.